you can probably guess we're working on the tilt wheel. This is for a 64 Chrysler. Uh, 64 Chrysler was the first year it was used. Yeah, this is actually built by General Motors, their Saginaw steering unit. This is the steering column for a tilt wheel. It's uh, been the subject of a lot of work lately. Uh, this is a spare. I'm having trouble with turn signal function. But that's the subject of a, another video. So, in this video, we're, uh, we're going to talk about how do you get the steering wheel off of the column. On the back side of the wheel, you'll find two Phillips heads exposed. Unscrew those, and that allows you to remove the decorative plate, and you end up with access to uh, the retaining ring for the horn. That is detached with two screws here, and this unit is the horn switch which is unique to tilt wheels. This tilt wheel, by the way, does not have a master spline. You know, master spline means that one of these teeth in here is missing so the wheel can be installed only one way. Chrysler wheels of the era, they won't interchange with the tilt wheel. One, because the splines are different, and two, because Chrysler wheels do have a master spline. See now, this is the receiving end of the wheel. And see? Splines everywhere. Now that means on reassembly, you can install this anywhere you want. These are the two screws that hold on the horn ring. They are 5 sixteenths. Now you want to remove this plastic decorative column, just two Phillips screws, and then that will allow you to Remove your horn ring. You need to remove the horn switch in order to get a puller on the wheel so you can remove it from the shaft. With the horn switch removed, you'll end up with two springs that load the horn switch and this pin here, spring loaded, that's your horn ground. So, I'm going to put the wheel back on just to illustrate so in a normal situation, you'd be looking now at this, where of course you remove the steering shaft nut and there's a washer. And you're saying, well, I've only got one puller because the other side is plugged up by the horn switch. How the heck am I going to pull this wheel off the shaft? To get the wheel off the shaft, install a threaded rod in your available hole, 
put on your puller, load it. Of course, it's going to go off to the side, but then take a rubber mallet and tap the wheel in this side and bingo, she'll break free. This, by the way, is a Chrysler wheel 62, and I wanted to show you the, they have a master spline. There, see it? It's at 12 o'clock. So once you have the wheel removed, You remove these two Phillips, this plastic decorative ring pops off, and then you can remove your horn ring. You don't necessarily have to remove the horn ring, but I want to swap it to the other car because this horn ring and this center decal are better conditioned than the other ones. So I'm just going to do a part swap. Now you've got your wheel off and you can get on to your other projects. And with the horn ring removed, then you can get to all the surfaces that are blocked by the wheel. And you, it came out pretty good. This is a 64 Imperial. Uh, it's a convertible that I've got partly restored. This has got the tilt wheel too. It uses the same sliding turn signal switch down at the base. I'm not sure that Imperial kept that system past 64. Now the 65 columns I don't think they used it. Well, could be wrong. And I also notice that there are more detents in the Imperial than there are the Chrysler. That is, here, all the way down. One up, two up, three up. Four up, five up, five up is pretty much max. But I think that is more detents than what you see in the Chrysler. So let's see how many tilt positions we have in the Chrysler. Full down. One up, two up, huh, that's full down, that's one up. That's two up. Well, unless there's something wacky inside the head here, this has nowhere near the same number of detents that the Imperial. Not that that is a big deal. What I do need to do on this one is remove this housing so that I can get at the cables which are in here that control the turn signal switch. But that requires a special puller. It's, it's a device that gets in here and hooks under the lip and then with a slide hammer you pull this off. Coming up soon. 
I need to remove this collar and there is a tool that you use to do it. I haven't done it before so this will be a learning experience. We will unscrew these two, the column and the turn signal. In the service manual they describe a tool which kind of a u-shaped deal that'll fit in grabbing the lower lip and then a slide hammer and you essentially knock it off. Our tool is a little bit different. This is made by Larry Jet. And you see how this is going to fit in here. Instead of slide hammers, he's got a screw, so we'll be pressing against the shaft. Let's see how it works. Well, it took some finesse and wrestling, but with the tool, I was able to pull the collar off, exposing the mechanism. The collar is apparently just a press fit on the head. You see, this is the idea of the tools. You insert it and it catches enough of a lip. Now you can see that the bolt heads here have been ground. That's because they will catch here. I had to take the horn ring and get it up out of the way. But it, you know, it's a homemade tool and it doesn't take much to get this off but it does take a little bit of work so here's your turn signal switch to get that off you simply pry it up and forward with the turn signal pieces removed. Now you get access to the Bowden cable. See the orange piece there? And a Phillips screw. There's the Bowden cable removed. You remove it that way. I imagine installation could be a rustle. But Here's the problem that I have with mine. You see the sheath is broken at the top. Right there. If those two pieces were together, then the sheath, which grips here, would then be pulling the switch up, but because it isn't, I'm not getting the proper translation of the switch to compensate for the head movement.